Hey guys, thought I'd do a quick review of an FPGA development board that I've been working with recently. This is a Nemato Lab Mimus V2 FPGA development board. So first up, if you're not familiar with what an FPGA is, it's this chip here. And essentially what it does is it lets you design digital circuits on your computer, download them to the chip, and this chip essentially becomes that circuit. Obviously in practice it's a bit more complicated than that, but that's the concept. This is a Spartan 6 LX9 chip by Zlinux. So Zlinux is the company that develops it. Spartan 6 is the generation of chip and LX9 is the size of it. Obviously the bigger the chip, the bigger the design you can put on it. This is an LX9, so they range from an LX4 up to an LX150, so it's on the lower end of the range. But it's certainly capable for driving a board like this and there's some quite complex designs you could do on this before you outgrow it. It's driven by this 100 megahertz oscillator here and the Spartan 6 has clock management facilities built into it so you can multiply and divide that clock frequency to get a different frequency if you needed it. So say your design needed a 40 megahertz uh, clock you can start with this 100, multiply it by 2 to get 200, divide it by 5 to get the 40 megahertz that you're after. Over here is a PIC microcontroller uh, clocked by 12 megahertz clock here. This microcontroller's job is essentially housekeeping duties for this board and it does a few things. The first is it's responsible for USB communications with a connected PC and when you download your design this microcontroller writes the design to flash memory. The second thing it does is boots up the board so when you power on this board it copies the design from flash memory into the FPGA and sets the FPGA running. And then the third thing it can do is act as a pass-through to the PC for serial communication between the FPGA and a connected computer. Okay, there's a JTAG connector here. It's another way of programming the FPGA chip. 99% of people who use this will never use this connector. DC power or power through USB if you prefer. This uh, jumper here switches between the two, so you could run this off batteries or power pack if you wanted to. On the back is the flash memory I mentioned. There's 16 megabits or 2 megabytes of serial flash memory here. The designs for an LX9 take about 330k, so there's a mega, mega and a half of non-volatile storage available to the FPGA if you needed to store stuff there. Okay, that's the core functionality of this board. Everything else around here are basically accessories connected to the FPGA. So let's just run through those. First up we've got 512 megabit or 64 megabyte of DDR RAM. The Spartan 6 chip has two memory controllers that can control this memory. One of them is connected to this, the other one is unused. Um, it's nice having the memory controllers on here, makes it a lot easier to work with this DDR RAM than if you had to design all the circuitry for that yourself. Got three digit seven segment LED display, eight segment LED strip, eight dip switches, six push buttons arranged in an up, down, left, right, A, B or enter cancel arrangement. There's a micro SD card slot, stereo audio output, 256 color or 8 bit VGA connector here, JTAG, DC power, USB, and then along the front here are four general purpose connectors. So each of these has eight pins connected to the FPGA. Two pins are 3.3 volts and two pins ground. So you can extend the board in other ways through here, and I'll come back to this in a second. Okay, that's an overall view of the board. Uh, pros and cons. One of the big advantages of this board is obviously its price, $49, available either from Nemato Lab directly or I believe it's available on Amazon as well. Most other comparable boards to this would be closer to the $80 to $100 mark, I would think, so it's great value for money. Support is good. I've contacted Nemato Lab a couple of times. Uh, each time they've got back to me within a day or two with a good answer and an explanation as well, which is nice. The board's well made. Uh, they seem to have used good quality parts. Certainly these push buttons are better than what I've seen on a lot of other boards. And I like that they've used the click in, click out SD card slot as opposed to the cheaper push in, pull out with your thumbnail type slots you see on some of the other boards. Okay, it's quite well made. The wear and tear that you see here is more my fault. There was protective strips on here which I probably shouldn't have pulled off, but um, it's showing some wear there, but it's not really a problem. Okay, size-wise, it's about the size of an iPhone 7. So just to compare, it's certainly small enough that you could easily chuck this back in its box, put it in a laptop case or a student backpack and take it with you if you wanted to do some development on the fly. 
I like that it's got all the connectors, or the, at least the main connectors, on one edge here. So you could easily mount this in a case if you wanted to, unlike some other boards that tend to have connectors all the way around. It makes it very difficult to mount in a case. The form factor is nice. Overall, I'd describe the board as quite elegant. It's got just about everything you need to do a uh, old school computer emulation or an old retro gaming console. If you're doing computers, the one thing that you'll notice that's missing is there's nowhere to plug in a keyboard. But for that, you can get one of these. This is a Digilent PS2 PMOD connector. And it's a simple six pin connector, which is pin compatible with any of these six pin slots along here. So PMODs are these small boards. Um, they don't actually claim these to be PMOD com compatible, but they are uh, pin wise compatible. The main catch is PS2 actually requires uh, 5 volts, and this is only supplying 3.3, but most modern keyboards will work on 3.3. Certainly the cheap keyboard that I picked up off eBay to play with this works fine. The only catch is it seems to take a few seconds to, to boot up. Um, I don't know if that's because of the 3 volts or something else. Okay, so speaking of PMODs, if you look at the Digilent website, there is a whole bunch of these that you can get. They come in uh, mainly 6 and 12 pin varieties. And this one, for example, is a real time clock. You can add on PS2 keyboard. The catch with this board is if you're using these double width P mods, so this is a 12 bit VGA color adapter, uh, it's just a physical problem where the pins don't line up. So if you really wanted to use a double width board like this, you'd have to use a cable to get around the physical problem of actually plugging it in. Um, that said, there's a, I think there's only two uh, P mods that use those double width things. I think the other one is like a two digit seven segment LED display. Okay, so you can extend the board quite easily with these P mods. The seven segment Display here, it would be nice if it had a fourth digit here. Often when you're doing these types of designs, you'll be doing 8-bit processor on here, and it's nice to be able to display the 16-bit addresses that they often work with. So it'd be nice to have a fourth digit here. That said, just having the three is a huge bonus. Just with these three digits, the LEDs, buttons, switches, and maybe keyboard and a few other bits and pieces, if you're trying to learn, there's actually quite a lot of experimentation you can do just with that to learn how to work this board. Certainly um it would be nice to have the fourth digit, but just having the three is a bonus. The VGA adapter is only 8-bit color. It would be nice if it was a little more, but for this kind of board, I think it's fine. Like I said, you could you could put in a 12-pin, uh, sorry, a 12-bit color VGA adapter here if you wanted to, but at that point, you're probably looking at going to a bigger board anyway. Okay. Out of the box, this board is extremely slow to program. Um, took a couple of minutes to upload even a really simple design when I got it. Luckily, there's a firmware available, firmware update available for the PIC controller here. But to upload it, you need to set a jumper on these two pins here. But these two pins aren't here when you get the board. I've actually soldered those two in myself. So um, given that you only need to probably do that once, you could probably get by with just a paper clip through those two pinholes to flash the uh, the microcontroller there, and that fixes the the um, the download speed problem. The only other thing that some might consider as a downside with this is the Spartan 6 is an older chip now. I think the Spartan's been around for about 10 years, um, which means you need to use Linux's older development tools, which really only run on Linux. They do have a Windows uh, version download, but it's just a virtual machine with their tools installed on it. So personally, I prefer just set up a Linux machine myself and put the tools on it that I need. Uh, the tools they do work fine. When I, I run them in a virtual machine, no problem at all. Okay, just a quick demo of this board. Out of the box it does flashing lights and digits. And it also does a VGA display. So you can see there, just displays the company name. Nothing terribly exciting, but shows that it works. Okay, that's pretty much the entire board. Um, Mar Mato Lab Mimus V2, excellent value, great little board, highly recommended. Okay, I'll put some links to some of the things I mentioned in the description and check it out. Thanks guys, bye.